What's up everyone, excited to give you this video today about top financial groups. So first off, this is not financial advice, so please do your own research in D&D. But with that being said, in this video, I will go over some search trends I'm seeing. I'll go over short interest, I'll jump into the chart and give a price prediction on shares. And then I will also go into some fundamentals for the company. So with that being said, let's dive right in. So top here is the number one trending stock on stock twits. It's also the fourth most active stock, meaning that it's the fourth most talked about stock on stock twits, which is kind of incredible when you consider how small the company is. The company is only at about a quarter billion dollars worth um, in terms of market cap. So pretty interesting there. Um, and for those that don't know, this is a trading platform stock. Like I said, about a quarter million dollar or excuse me, a quarter billion dollar market cap, and they trade at an 80 times price to earnings ratio. But with that being said, let's jump into some Google trends. So when shares had that initial jump in April, they obviously, that was when search volume had peaked out for the stock. And right now we are only at 17% of that peak search volume. So we still have a ton of room to go in terms of retail chatter and search volume. So if search volume and retail chatter were to 5X, that would be back to those April levels where obviously shares were much, much higher. And so I do think the the lack of retail chatter is um, is could could obviously change and we could see a lot more retail chatter, which would be a bullish uh, tailwind for the stock. So that could help push shares higher. And, you know, there definitely is a lot of upside to um, to run, um, a lot of runway for more search volume over the coming weeks, which should positively affect shares. But let's take a look at short interest. So right now, short interest is 17% of the float. Um, and I, I would normally say that that this could lead to a short squeeze, but honestly, the days to cover of 0.2 implies that a short squeeze isn't very likely for the stock, and that's just because volume is very high already. So for, for those that don't know, basically a one of days to cover means that it takes one day of average volume to cover the shares are sold short. Um, so 0.2 um, obviously is a lot less. So it, it's less than a, than a day's worth of volume to cover the shares that are sold short, which um, you know doesn't imply a short squeeze. T typically, we look for a days to cover of 10 for a short squeeze, um, but we're not seeing that with the stock. So interesting there, um, you know, no real short squeeze imminent for, this, for shares, in my opinion. But th that doesn't mean shares couldn't go higher. So let's look at the chart here and try to make a prediction on share. So we moved over this resistance level at about seven dollars, which is where shares had topped out in April. It's also where shares had bottomed in August of 2022. Um, so we moved above this level on Thursday, and now we're continuing higher pre-market to move above this 100-day, the 200-day, and the 150-day moving average, which would all be a, a very bullish sign. Um, and obviously, we saw a big spike up in volume yesterday. So in terms of a prediction, um, well, first off, momentum is quite bullish, and you can see this kind of signified in the this golden cross that we saw back on May 1st. And for those that don't know, a golden cross is when the 50-day moving average crosses above the 200-day moving average. Um, and like I said, this implies bullish momentum. It's probably the most watched and studied moving average um, kind of signal here. Um, so definitely a sign of more upside to come. Um, and obviously the shares IPO'd in 2022. Um, and now I believe we likely... Well, we're set to open above this 100-day moving average at about $10.20. I think we move above this level and continue higher to the 50-day moving average at about $14. Um, so that is my price prediction for shares, is that we open up about at about 10 and continue to move higher <clears throat> to the 50 DMA. Um, so I will be waiting to see if that happens. I believe it is somewhat likely if we, you know, 
kind of falter here and move below the, the DMAs, I definitely won't take a trade on this. But interesting to see that. And then if, if you wanted to play it really safe, you could also wait till we get a move above the 50 DMA. Um, then, then I would really think, you know, it's kind of off to the races. Um, and we could see a retest of highs. Um, so that is my prediction for shares. I think we likely move higher to about $14 today. And if we, you know, burst through that 50 DMA, I think, you know, retesting um, the highs could be possible. Obviously, not financial advice, just my opinion. Do your own research. I could be wrong about this, but that is what the charts are telling me. And then when we consider what happened here um, in May, why shares fell so quickly, um, well, a large part of that was top financial was actually had to suspended trading on concerns about recent trading. So um, trading was halted as the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission temporarily suspended trading due, due to concerns about the accuracy of its information. The suspension lasts from Friday until May 25th, Friday being um, early May. Um, so obviously this has subsided and trading has continued now. Um, so it was just a temporary sus suspension, but nevertheless, it really did force shares much, much lower. So, um, and, and short interest was only 4.8%, um, you know, back in May. And since obviously all, all this happened, we've seen short interest, um, you know, quadruple. So interesting there, we've seen, you know, a, a lot of firms pushing this stock lower. And then here's kind of the bullish news for shares, why shares are up so much this morning, is we saw the company report um, positive EPS of $0.10 cents for the quarter, and then we also saw a revenue of $9.7 million, which is up 24% for the year. So good sign there. I love to see that the financials are improving for shares. Um, you know, definitely always want to look at that and see that. Um so revenues generated from trading solution services to nine customers was approximately 4.4 million. Um, and obviously this, this notes that, that, that the company went back to trading in May. Um, other, ser other, excuse me, other services increased from 280,000 in the year ended. Um, so Q3 of 2022 to 294,000 in Q2 of 2023. So the revenues are up 24%. Uh, this increase is mainly due to an increase in revenue from trading solution services and interest income. So we also saw net margins decrease by 9.9% to 35% for the year from 44.9% from this quarter last year. So you can kind of see this all broken down here. Um, net income coming down a, a tad. Um, income before uh, taxes coming down a tad. Um, and then obviously earnings coming down a bit as well. Earnings dropping 16%, although it's only two cents. And I'll just read a quote from their CEO. We concluded the fiscal year of 2023 on a strong note. The world experienced challenges arising from COVID pandemic and geopolitical tensions around the world and rising U.S. interest rate environment, despite having to face such strong headwinds. That was not conductive to, to business growth. Top achieved a nearly 24% growth as compared to fiscal year 2022. Our company also achieved a milestone in t June 2022, which was successful initial public offering, obviously. Um, Post-IPO, we continue to demonstrate our ambition and commitment to expansion, positioned the company for further growth um, through strate strategic investments into the financial industry and fintech background combining, um, formulating uh, unique market strategies in various regions to meet needs in the global mar financial market. So, um, like you said, you know, revenues up a lot are the net income did come down, which is slightly concerning. Um, and, and you can kind of see their revenue streams broken down here. Um, commissions for futures 
broking um, made up most of our revenues at 44%, 54%, and 95% of the total revenues for the year ended uh, March. So that basically shows you how this has progressed. Um, so good to see there. Um, so still, it, it, it's come down in terms of uh, the percentage of revenues, but it's still pretty solid at 44% for 2023. So the company had trading losses of 800,000 um, compared to gains of 200,000 in the year ended uh, 2023. So unfortunate trading losses there. And then expenses increased by $2 million or you know pretty much um, 47% to 6.3 million compared to 4.2 million just a year ago. Um, so, you know, I, I won't run through every single number here, um, but I do want to cover cash. So you can see that, that, that the company has a robust, um, you know, cash holding. So last year, the company had 6.1 million in cash. Now we have 15.9 million in cash. So definitely a good, um, you know, uh, backstop for shares there and for the company as a whole. Um, like I said, trading losses. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you know what? I, I won't go through all these numbers, but you can see that the EPS has declined over the past two years, um, which I don't love to see, but, you know, given we have cash increasing, um, you know, I, I, I do feel somewhat safe in, in these in these shares. I don't believe the company is going bankrupt anytime soon. But with that being said, the company is going to have to be able to garner a um, more earnings to, um, you know, kind of push that P.E. down, which is about 80 times and will be higher once shares um, open up. So with that being said, um, I will just briefly conclude, I do believe shares can conti can continue higher as long as we open up above this 100-day moving average. I believe we likely move up to the 50-day moving average at 14. Now, if we don't open up above this 100-day moving average, you know, I, I, I wouldn't really jump right into shares. But I think the safest way to probably play the stock is to wait until we move above this 50-day moving average at about $14.20. Then we could likely retest highs. Um, and then, obviously, just to, for conclusion purposes, um, you know, surge volume is still only 17% of peak volume, which does offer some upside for shares when you think about, um, you know, retail chatter. So, with that being said, I will end the video there. If you got some value from this video, please leave a like. We post company breakdowns and important market moving news on this channel on a daily basis, so make sure you are subscribed. If you would like to receive my daily portfolio moves, my exits, my entries, and see how me and my team of analysts are trading the markets, join the Discord through the link in the description below to get our free 7-day trial. Also, if you would like to join our free daily newsletter, sign up to our Substack, which is linked below as well. With that being said, good luck everyone, happy trading, happy investing.